Reviews matter. You know they do. We've all spent 10 or more minutes perusing reviews before committing. And that's why I need your help. Would you please take a few minutes today to rate and review this podcast? And if an episode speaks to you, share it with your friends or with a family member or someone who might encourage. Thanks, friends, for your continued encouragement and support. I appreciate it more than you know. Today's episode is called Forever Friends. As we talk about going back to school and starting this whole new season of life, so often when you talk to young people, especially those who are not so thrilled to go back to school, if you say, you know, what is it that is bothering you or why are you not liking school? A lot of times you'll hear a common complaint. I don't have a lot of friends. Hey guys, it's Amber, wife, mother, warrior, type A child of God. Here at Little Things, we examine everyday issues from a biblical perspective with one simple goal, to know and love God more. Thanks for joining me. A couple years ago, I was walking with a friend and she was asking me about one of my daughter's transitions to a different school, a different grade, all that. And I said, you know, she really hasn't found her group of friends yet. And this friend of mine said, you know, she doesn't need a group of friends. She needs one or two good friends. So now when young people ask me or say to me when I ask them if they're looking forward to school starting and they're like, uh, and I'll, I'll prod a little bit long further and they say, you know what, I just don't have my group of friends. I will ask them, do you have one or two people that you can depend on throughout the day, that you enjoy seeing, that you can maybe sit by at lunch? And almost always they say, I do, I do. I have, you know, three or four. And so I'll say, you know, that that's enough right there. We have to quit thinking that having a huge group of friends and being super, super popular, that's the goal. Because honestly, a lot of times when you have many, many friends, they're very shallow relationships. Whereas when you have a handful of friends that are deeper relationships, they can really be the most uh, just they're, they're the things that they're the most valuable. They're, they're the things that you come to cherish and that you look forward to spending time with them. And so I think sometimes we just need to change our perspective a little bit from do I have, you know, a, a large group of friends who are just acquaintances who barely know me, or do I have two or three really good friends who I could call any time of the day or night, who they would talk to me, who they they know enough about me. And you know, if you have even more than two or three, if you have five or six, if you have seven or eight, boy, you are blessed. When I graduated from high school, I didn't remember this, but I was on a Facebook group for with my graduating class and they were talking about this recently. And I, I was a little shocked because I graduated from a public high school. And when I graduated, the song they sang at my graduation was Friends by Michael W. Smith. It says, friends are friends forever if the Lord's the Lord of them. And a friend will not say never because the welcome will not end. Though it's hard to let you go in the Father's hand, we know that a lifetime's not too long to live as friends. And I think there's a couple of keys there. Friends are friends forever if the Lord's the Lord of them. When you have Christian friends, when you have people who share your faith, there is a bond there that you just won't have with an unbeliever because the Spirit of God is in both of you. And I think that's a really important thing to keep in mind as you're searching for friends and as you're looking through and asking who your friends are or examining you know, with a critical eye, who, who in my life can I count on as a friend? Ask yourself if they're Christians. It's not to say that you can't be friends with someone who's not Christian. I have several friends who I I wouldn't say are Christians and they're, they're nice people. 
But my closest friends definitely are my Christian friends. The other thing about that Michael W. Smith song that is so good to remember is that we know that we're going to be spending eternity with our friends who share our faith. So not only are we investing in a friendship for this life, but we'll be together in heaven, which is really a neat thing to think about. I've been studying the Proverbs lately, and there's a couple interesting quotes in the Proverbs that I think are worth taking a look at. One is in Proverbs 12, 26, and it says, The righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. When my children started high school, they went to a totally different environment. So they had gone, my first three had gone to a Christian day school until ninth grade, and then they started a public high school. So they were going in and they weren't um, sports players, they weren't athletic, they hadn't been in a lot of community events. We mostly were doing things at churches they were growing up, so they just didn't have a lot of people that they knew going in to this public high school. And my husband gave them some advice that I thought was really smart. He said to my firstborn, my daughter, as she was going, he said, you know, don't just latch on to the first people who seem to be friendly or who invite you to sit at their table or whatever. It's okay to go two or three weeks just observing people. See what they're like. See how they act. Sit by, you know, one group of people one day for lunch and maybe try a different group the next day. Don't feel obligated to sit in the exact same place the next day. Just weigh your options. Because he said a lot of times people seem like the kind of person you want to hang out at first with at first. But as you get to get to know them better, maybe they aren't really the people that you want to hang out with. I thought that was really smart. And, you know, Solomon is basically saying the same thing. Choose your friends carefully. Don't just hang out with people because it's convenient to hang out with them. Think about their character. The way of the wicked leads them astray. So often, if we could we could spare ourselves a lot of grief down the line, if we would just watch at the people that we might hang out with, if we could just watch what their character is, what they find funny, how they treat other people, what do they do for fun? Uh, that tells you a lot about a person. So it's a good idea to step back, watch people for a while, be friendly to many, many people, and then choose your friends carefully. Proverbs thirteen twenty says, walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. One of the hardest things to do is recognize when you need to get new friends. It's one of the hardest things to do, but it can make the biggest impact on where you end up. So for instance, I was recently sent a study, and I don't have it in front of me, unfortunately, But the gist of this study said that you basically become the sum total of the five people that you are closest to. So think about that for a minute. I don't know who you spend the most time with, but think about the people in your life who you spend the most time with. Now, for a lot of us, those people are our family, our immediate family, because, you know, if you're a mom and you are married, you are probably spending the most, the biggest majority of your day with your family, right? That's fine. And some of us have coworkers and we couldn't choose our coworkers. So those are the people that we spend the most time with outside of our family. But but beyond that, when you choose to be with people, when you ask another couple to go out to supper, or when you ask a friend to go to coffee, who are you hanging out with? Now think about the traits that those people possess. Are those the traits that you want in your life? So for instance, when you get together with friends, are you most likely to complain? Or are you most likely to spur one another on? Are your friends ambitious? Or do they tend to be lazy? 
Are your friends Christian and reading the Bible and doing Bible studies and really working on their relationship with Christ? Or are they more likely to talk about doing a community service or a hobby or not ever bringing up the Bible? These are kind of important things because the truth is, we're told in Proverbs, we become who we walk with. And that's exactly what that study showed. In fact, Zig Ziglar said, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. So the point being, as you examine your friends, as your children examine their friends, sometimes we have to make changes and say, I think the people that I'm hanging out with maybe leading me in a wrong direction or not the direction that I want to go. Maybe I do complain more when I come home after spending time with this person. Or maybe I don't feel good about myself after I hang out with them. Or they never bring up the Lord. They only say, well, you know, that's all That's all the better you can do. Or what a bummer. Best of luck. We might want to think about that and find out, examine who you're spending time with and see who you really want to become. And then ask the Lord to put those friends in your life. C.S. Lewis said, Christ, who said to his disciples, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, can truly say to every group of Christian friends, you've not chosen one another, but I have chosen you for one another. One place in my life that I see that to be absolutely true beyond a shadow of a doubt is my small group study that my husband and I are in together. So we joined this study years and years, 15, 16, 17 years ago. We signed up at church and I signed up for the study that honestly uh, was uh, a study that I would never have to host. So there were all different small group studies that were starting. It was the It was right about this time of year, just before September. And in September, all these small groups were starting at our church. And some of us, some of the studies were going to be rotating. Everybody would take a a turn hosting. And I remember thinking, oh, that is just way too much work. I had small children at the time. And I thought, I want to get out. I I don't want to deal with cleaning my house and making dessert and doing all this. And there was like two studies that said, this person wants to host all the time. And so I said, sign me up. And so I didn't necessarily uh, think about the people in the group so much as that was my very shallow reason for joining the group. And I can say now beyond a shadow of the doubt that the Lord chose us uh, to be in this group with these people who have become some of our closest and dearest friends. And clearly God knew what he was doing, even though I was signing up for very superficial reasons. The Holy Spirit was in that, and the prompting was unbelievable. Because my husband and I have started several groups. We, we've we tried to start several offshoots, and you know it just never has really lasted more than a year. So it is very, very special when you find that group of Christian friends who – just see each other in the same light and and, uh, encouraging each other in the Lord, pray for one another. It's just incredible. In fact, Timothy Keller said, you can't live the Christian life without a band of Christian friends, without a family of believers in which you find a place. When I read that, I think about church. I hope that when you walk into church on Sunday, you feel like you're walking into your home. For us, when we were, you know, at home for a season during the COVID pandemic shutdown, all that, going back to church, it only took one time for me to remember this is home. Man, I've missed that place. I've missed these people, all these people. These are my friends. These are the people that I share life with. And I hope that you feel that way about your church. And if you don't, then you need to pray. And you also, Pastor Mike reminded me a long time back, several months back, when we were doing the interview on abuse, he reminded me that there are a lot of churches. 
So if you have had trouble with leadership, if you have had trouble with a pastor who's overwhelming or puts you down or, or whatever, guess what? There are a lot of good Bible teaching churches, and I hope that you can find your place that feels like home and that has a group of Christians who study the word together, who believe the word, who worship together, who pray together, and who also fellowship together. That's just so, so important. And I think another really important thing for our kids especially is the whole social media aspect. There's a meme that says real friends don't gossip, they pray. And I think it's really important that we teach our children how to behave like a friend on social media. So for instance, if they get news about somebody else at their school, and they know that they would want that, they would not want that information circulating about them. Their job is to not pass it on and to hopefully reach out to the person who is about to just say, hey, I'm your friend. I don't know the situation. All I know is if this was going around about me, I would want someone to be a friend to me. And so I just want you to know I'm your friend. Jonathan and David in the Old Testament were amazing friends, and they were one in heart and spirit. I almost think that David had quite the effect on Jonathan. David and uh, Jonathan became friends really after David defeated Goliath, and David had this incredible trust in the Lord, and Jonathan seemed to have the same trust in the Lord. In fact, he was fine with David being anointed. He was happy to think that someday he would serve as David's number two. He had no problem like that with that, unlike his father, who really had a problem with it. But, you know, we see Jonathan getting this courage, too, that I have to think might have been the result of spending time with David and hanging out together and David talking about his faith and, you know, having that conversation. I can imagine that there was that conversation of how on earth did you have the courage to go out and defeat Goliath? And David just saying, you know, I knew that it was the Lord. I knew it wouldn't be me. It would be the Lord and he would work through me. And I could see Goliath just detesting and mocking God. And I thought, God, I'm going to stand up for your glory. And so anyway, there's this instance in the Old Testament. I forgot to write down where it was. I think it was in 2 Samuel. But Jonathan goes to sort of attack the Philistines. His dad is sitting at a pomegranate tree trying to figure out what to do. And Jonathan gets up the courage and goes and kills 20 men with his armor bearer. And as I read this, I just think... That, to me, looks like something you did because you had hung out with David. And, you know, we know that David was friends with these. He had his mighty men and he had these people that he hung out with in the wilderness or while he was fleeing from King Saul. But Jonathan was just this special person who he was one in spirit with. And Jonathan stood up for him. And David loved Jonathan. They were just one in heart and spirit. It was just the most amazing friendship. So even though David had these other people who are listed as his friends, look at he had this one really special friend. And really when you get down to it, if you have one friend like that, that's a gift from God. That's enough to spur you on and to keep you going and, and to refresh your spirit. The Apostle Paul had many friends, but it was almost like they were in and out of his life all the time. He was with Barnabas at first and John Mark, of course, who John Mark decided to go home and that caused quite a dispute with Barnabas. But then throughout Paul's ministry, you know, you hear about Luke being with him, Luke the doctor who wrote the book of Acts, and and you hear about his time with the people of Ephesus, the Lydia, the jailer and the people at Philippi, you hear about Priscilla and Aquila, Timothy, Onesimus, um, John Mark eventually at the end of Paul's life was again a special friend. 
And I think that's good for us to remember too, because so often we get to have these really close special friendships, but they only last for a season. And then we have other friends. I've really seen this as my work back when I was working as an elderly companion. You know, I would get to take care of these people for three, maybe four years before they went on to be with the Lord. And so I'd be in this environment where I would talk with other family members and other people who were in these facilities and you get to know them and you get to be friends with them. And one by one they die. And as as these people in the facilities die, well, their, their family members no longer came. And so you were friends for a season and they were special friends to encourage and help you during that season. And then they sort of all went their, their ways. And we can thank the Lord for that. I, when my kids were little, we had certain people that we hung out with, other people who had children the same age, and, and we did certain events together. And some of those people are still in our lives, and some of those aren't. God brought certain people to our lives for a season, and it was such a special season. It was such a special friendship. But now we have other people in our lives. And it's this season. And it's okay. We don't have to worry about if this friendship is going to last forever. Because as we get to know one another, and as we share friends and friendships with other Christians, we know that even if time and space take us away from each other for a time and for a season, we're still going to be in eternity together. And and we'll never have to part again. So we can thank the Lord that he has been so good to us in providing friends. I just want to encourage you that if you don't have a huge friend group, not to worry. One or two close friends, that's that's all you really need. And if you have more than that, well, you are truly, truly blessed. And you know, there was a certain time in my life, in fact, I remember very very well. I had left college. And of course, when I left college, I I left all my friends, I moved back home. And then I had met this really wonderful person. And we were very close friends, we did a lot together. And then she moved away, she took a different job somewhere else. And then I got to be really, really good friends with another woman. And we had our children just a few months apart. And We were really close friends and her husband took a job way across the country. And I remember sitting in the parking lot watching her drive away with tears streaming down my face and thinking, okay, Lord, I have just lost another friend. She's still a friend, even to this day. We just weren't in close proximity anymore where we could just go hang out at the park with the kids and go for a walk and that stuff. I said, Lord, I have another friend that's going to be leaving. You are going to have to be my friend. You will never, ever be let down by God. He is the one that's there any time of the day or night. He is the one who will never move away. He is the one who knows everything about you. He knows every horrible thought you've ever had. He knows every terrible thing you've ever done. He knows your heart inside and out. And he loves you anyway. That is a forever friend. This has been Little Things. Because in God's kingdom, the little things are the big things. If you aren't familiar with Pastor Mike's teaching, you are definitely missing out. He's got a down-to-earth approach that is so easy to listen to. I appreciate how transparent he is and willing to tackle really hard issues with kindness and love and unbelievable compassion. I love to listen to sermons in podcast form because I can listen while doing the dishes or weeding or exercising. Check out Time of Grace with Pastor Mike Novotny anywhere you listen to podcasts. I can't tell you how blessed I feel to have the opportunity to talk to you each week. Your continued prayers and support are appreciated. And if you're willing, please share, rate, and review this podcast. Thank you so much.